All right. <clears throat> so uh, I'm going to give you guys um, a, a briefing on what's happened lately with Joey Boy's <laughs> documents. Okay. <laughs> and since you might be on audio only, I'll, I'll just take you through it um, sentence by sentence. All right. So here it goes. <clears throat> Actually, let's play some more music. There we go. Ah, I forgot it all throughout the Tate segment. Oh, goddamn. So, from November 2022 to January 2023, about 20 government documents were discovered by President Joe's attorneys. Ah, flip, I said his name. Okay. In his former office at Penn Joey Boy Center in Washington, D.C., and in his personal residence in Wilmington, Delaware, Dating to his vice presidency in the Obama administration on November twenty, November second, twenty twenty two, Joey Boy's attorneys discovered the first set of documents in a locked closet at the Penn Center, which they reported that day to the National Archives and Records Administration, which retrieved them the next day. The documents include intelligence material and briefing memos on Ukraine, Iran, and the United Kingdom. In coordination with the Justice Department, his attorneys. Christ, Joey Boy's attorneys discovered a second series of documents at Joey Boy's home on December 20, followed by several more on January 9th and January 12th. So already, um, quite disanalogous from Donnie Boy's situation, like right off the bat, and that not only um, were they discovered at this specific educational institution that was merely named after Joey Boy, but also the fact that they immediately got into contact with uh, the national, uh, let me see the acronym, the NARA, and immediately just turned it over to them. And we're heavily coordinating with the Justice Department throughout the entire operation. <sighs> okay, the all right, we've already read that. On January 12th, Attorney General Merrill Garland reported, appointed Robert Hur as special counsel to investigate possible unauthorized removal and retention of documents or other records. The next day, the House Judiciary Committee opened a separate investigation into the documents. Okay. So, let's actually go into the timeline. Now, for a more in-depth timeline, because this will be what we need to actually cover um, the videos and Shapiro's uttered dishonesty surrounding this situation. So, on November 2nd, 2022, Joey Boy's personal attorneys found documents stating his, to his vice presiden presidency, sorry, some of which were top secret, uh, sensitive, compartmented information in a locked closet um, while packing files at the pen. Center for Diplomacy and Global Engagement, a think tank where worked after leaving the government in 2017. The White House also the White House notified NARA on the same day of the discovery. NARA retrieved the documents the next day and notified his inspector general, who referred the matter to the DOJ on November 4th. The FBI and DOJ initiated an assessment of whether materials had been mishandled on November 9th, notifying Joey Boy's personal attorneys the next day. CBS News reported on January 13th that were a total of about 20 documents found at the Penn Center. The Penn Joey Boy Center and Joey Boy's home in Wilmington. Um, oh, damn. Okay. On December 20, <coughs> sorry, a second batch of documents was discovered by Joey Boy's attorneys in the garage of his home, one page document was also found in a room adjacent to the garage on January 5th. Another document was discovered in the library at Joey Boy's residence, and on January 12th, five more pages of documents were recovered from the library. The additional pages, pages <clears throat> were not reported earlier because the attorneys who had made the initial discovery stopped searching because they did not have any security clearances. None of these documents were top secret. Okay. The finding of the second batch of documents at residence was not Joey Boy's 
residence was not initially disclosed to the public when the White House made its initial disclosure on January 9th. White House Press Secretary Karen Jean-Pierre later stated that the DOJ inquiry prevented the administration from disclosing the matter to the public, so they did have to wait until they were getting around to appointing some sort of special counsel. All right, so now that we've understood that, uh, and I'm going to keep that tab open, but not show it on StreamYard because, you know, obviously for the sake of reference purposes and for the sake of, you know, actual political honesty, okay, I'm just going to keep it there. But I'm going to pull up Shapiro's video and just, uh, uh, we're going to both witness, you and I, the utter deceit that Shapiro employs surrounding this scandal. So, here we go. You saw the photograph of the documents laid out on the floor at Mar-a-Lago. What did you think to yourself? And, oh, okay, I, I should actually state my own personal opinion on this. Um, investigate him and uh, prosecute him to the full extent of the law. I don't care. I'm, I want held accountable. I want held accountable, too. Like... No, notice how conservatives are constantly saying, Ah, oh, well, the documents might have been planted, and, you know, this is a, a, a completely unauthorized weaponization of the DOJ. And, you know, he could have already, he has the power to declassify the documents. No, see how I'm consistent? Investigate both of them, okay? I don't care. If they're found guilty, they're not guilty. If they're found guilty, they're guilty. If they're found not guilty, they're not guilty, okay? There you go. Looking at that image. How that could possibly happen. How one, anyone could be that irresponsible. And I thought, what? <laughs> yeah. Anyone, you know, including you. The data was in there that may compromise sources and methods. By that, I mean names of people who helped or et cetera. And it's just uh, totally irresponsible. So irresponsible. And what was in there? I mean, I've been, I've been looking at calls, coming recipe. For Dude, you are phenomenally funny, dude. It's a mystery as to why Hollywood wouldn't employ your screenplays, man. Coca-Cola, the original me. No, 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 no. Okay, well, it would be weird and ironic if the president of the United States, when he was the vice president of the United States, and taking them to It'd be strangely hilarious if that turned out to be the truth. Oh, well, I'm um, breaking news. According to CBS, Attorney General Merrick... Well, okay, so why aren't... Suddenly, why aren't you complaining about the DOJ being weaponized? And not only that, why aren't you calling for the defunding of the FBI? Huh. A little inconsistent on your part, isn't it there, Ben? Garland has assigned the U.S. attorney in Chicago to review documents marked <laughs> that were found at the... <laughs> I always remember, politics is veep. Everyone is a moron. Documents that were marked <laughs> the Penn Center for Diplomacy and Global Engagement in Washington. Two sources with knowledge of the inquiry told CBS News. The roughly 10 documents are from President <laughs> presidential office at the center, the sources said. CBS News has learned the FBI is also involved in the U.S. attorney's inquiry. Boom, 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 boom. Womp, womp from the prices right. Like, just well done. Dude, wh why not have a soundboard? Okay, I'm in the process of setting up a soundboard on the stream myself. But, con, you're funded by fracking billionaires. Like, do something better than that. Besides really impressions of what, you know, deep brass instruments sound like, okay? Mashed potato for brains. Terrible. You can't, you should never have a joke who had a big Are you going to apply that same standard to Because I do. I do. Investigate both of them. And if they're found guilty, lock both of them up. Okay? Area. The material was identified by personal attorneys from Mr. Biden on November 2nd, just before the midterm elections. Richard Salbert. Ah, oh, well, it could have been planted, couldn't it have? And he has the authority to declassify anything he wants. No. Okay. Notice me. Notice me. I'm consistent. Okay? So, in both scenarios, um, comparing Donnie Boy and Joey Boy, right? Documents were found. Um... Yeah, so, uh, top secret documents were founded in the Penn Joey Boy Center, you know, at obviously Penn University, and not only that, documents were found in his home. Obviously, no top secret documents were found in his home, but, you know, they were less, all right? Investigate both of them. Apply a consistent standard, so I don't know why Shapiro is going on and pontificating. Excuse me about how, you know, it's irresponsible of but then completely ran defense for 
pulled all these arguments completely out of his ass. Oh, well, maybe they were planted. He has the, the authority to classify a- anything he wants. Um, you know, weaponization of the DOJ. Okay. No. Be consistent, man. But he's not consistent. He's brazenly not consistent because he knows his audience of chud morons will eat anything up. He doesn't even make it look like he believes in anything. Okay. President confirmed the documents were discovered when attorneys were packing files housed in a locked closet to prepare to vacate office space at the Penn in Washington D.C. Oh, locked closet. What if they were planted? What if they were? He has the authority to classify anything. In one. Okay. Apply a consistent standard, dude. I want to hear it. If you actually are being consistent, which I know you're not, I want to hear about it. The weaponization of the DOJ, the defund the FBI, the absolute abuse of power that's going on in the White House. Come on. I want to hear it. Oh, and ironically, the guy that's appointing special counsel, Merrick Garland, you know, obviously the attorney general, right, head of the DOJ, is a part of the administration. So at least actually, you know, like holding himself to account. You mean in a locked closet? But I thought that locked closets were bad. Like if it's a locked closet in Florida, that's super bad. And if it's a locked closet in Washington, D.C., it's totally okay. Uh, they're both extremely bad. Like, what do you want me to say? You see how I'm consistent? I, I do love that they discovered this November 2nd. You'll recognize that November 2nd is before the actual election date, November 6th. And yet we only find out about this in mid-January of... No, yeah, okay, because they wanted to appoint special counsel, right? 2023. Hmm, might it have made a difference in the midterm elections hmm. if people had known that the had had a bunch of in his possession? We'll get to more of this in just one second. First, Black Rifle Coffee Company. It is keeping me alive right oh now. My God. brand new puppy. I have okay. three young kids. So obviously I'm, I'm, I'm accustomed to, veterans. to Ben, you know, doing ads. But I, I saw in his debunked show, he did two different ads back to back. Like Christ, they're they're just swimming in money. Problem to get all the helpings you need. Okay. Veggie, fruits, so apparently, is very very okay. difficult. This is where Pirro for ten percent off. You can also find Black Rifle Coffee in grocery and convenience stores near you. Black Rifle Coffee is okay, America's coffee. Fuck. Comes in balance of nature, fruits and veggies. No, nope. yeah, it is too. Ads. The best okay, way to make sure wow. you're getting essential nutrition. Balance of nature, benefits, more energy, less fatigue. Order as preferred customer plus. Blah, Nature.com. Blah, free fiber and spice. Blah. A source familiar with the matter told CBS News the documents did not contain nuclear secrets. Well, that's the new standard. They have to contain nuclear secrets. By the way, I see no evidence that Donald actually contains nuclear secrets. Okay, let me actually debunk that, right? Did it classified documents have nuclear secrets? Again. Okay, material. Nope, yeah, okay. Shapiro, again, brazenly lying. I just want to see the headline. Um... Contain foreign nations. Foreign nations, yeah, nuclear secrets. Let me actually screen share this. Let me stop the screen there. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to bring up my camera in a bit. So, Shapiro is just lying as usual. Let me... Okay, there we go. Shapiro is just lying as usual. That That's just not true, Ben. That's absolutely not true. Keep grifting while you can. Obviously, his audience of chud morons is gonna, you know, there are all those rumors that he had wrong. nuclear secrets and they were being distributed, but none of them. No, again, that is independently verified by trustworthy press. PBS is pretty good. That has been confirmed. Sabre also. It absolutely has. You're lying. And on the same day, the material was discovered, November second. The White House Counsel's Office notified the National Archives, which took possession of the materials the following morning. The discovery of these documents was made by the President's attorney. Sabre said the documents were not the subject of any previous request or inquiry by the archives. Since that discovery, the President's personal attorneys have cooperated with the archives and the Department of Justice in a process to ensure that any. Administration records are guess who didn't his name starts with a T well his last name starts with a T and the next letter is R and the next letter is U and the next letter is M and the next letter is P so appropriately in the possession of the archives okay so the okay I know you can't spell Ben like I I, I know that's beyond your capacity so it, it's all right the distinction they're going to attempt to draw is that we discovered it and we handed it over as opposed to Donald discovered and he refused to hand it over okay I that, that's absolutely what happened will say that that is in fact a distinction but you know what is true classified documents are out there floating around because politicians are irresponsible joe b- exceptions to that rule so when you have slow yeah okay consistent all right yeah old joe talking about how terrible it is just pure irresponsibility to have these documents floating around outside of yeah i don't because he's a hypocrite do you expect leftists like me to run defense for him in scenarios like this 
Okay, no. The only people that are going to do that are establishment shills, like CNN and that, and then... <laughs> well, okay. As faulty as they may be, they, they clearly have media training and can speak more eloquently than I can, okay? I'll give them that. But they're establishment shills, and they're pretty much the only ones that are going to be running defense for Now, I will point out, like Shapiro, how these scenarios are somewhat disanalogous, but fundamentally, at the end of the day, I will hold both of them to account, okay? I don't take you seriously because I don't take any of you seriously. And it just goes to show, as always, and... I don't take you seriously either, Shapiro. Don't take any of them seriously. Well, pretty much the only person I take seriously is myself. And Omar. Forever. The narrative matters so much more than the fact pattern. And Vashna Hassanabi and the rest of Bread too. These events. If you just follow the fact pattern in the Mar-a-Lago case, the worst you could say about President is that President was clumsy and silly about how he took the documents from the Mar-a-Lago. Yeah, hundreds of them. And flushed them down the toilet and ate some of them. And... Some of them actually, you know, consisted of documenting nuclear secrets. Isn't that interesting, old Benny boy? But no, at the end of the day, I want the same result. Just take them to court and prosecute them as honestly as you can, okay? And then he's a stubborn guy. But all of the wild media narrative and speculation about how Donald Trump actually a spy for the Ruskies and working for all of that, of course, was designed to tie into a prior narrative. And that narrative, as it turns out, was also a lie. It's like a daisy chain of lies from the media. They create a lying narrative, and then they back up that lying narrative with another lying narrative, which is followed by a third lying narrative. So if you'll recall. Yeah, and there isn't a better case of it than what the Daily Wire spews. I should keep on calling it the Daily Liar because that's a really good pejorative nickname for it. This is all part of the broader lying which is also being debunked today. It's the first move in the has affected America narrative was that the 2016 election was decided on the basis of Donald coordinating with the to skew the election. Nobody said that it was a significant enough interference in the election to actually decide the election results. <laughs> The only thing that people were saying was that, okay, it did interfere in the 2020 election and decided, uh, you know, to, to support, you know, a certain candidate and, and to interfere. Was it enough to get No. Fundament at the end of the day, like, what does get Republicans elected is the negligence of the Democrats. Okay? So. Results. And there are a few problems with this. One, they could actually prove no evidence of coordination between Donald the best that they had was Donald doing what he did in public, saying things like, I wish that Vladimir Putin would release all of the WikiLeaks. Wiki, we love WikiLeaks. And, and everybody going crazy over that. And yeah. I like how his nasaliness, like, uh, protrudes the, the personation. Yeah, wow. Like, okay. N not everybody is blessed with, you know, a rich, soothing baritone like me. <laughs> but, um, <clears throat> j j can you just try to, like, not speak entirely through your no, because Christ, I I is that nauseating? Jesus. Yes, the president of the United States should not be in favor of the release of foreign enemy, but Donald Trump was not actively coordinating. He was out there saying stuff because that's what Donald Trump used to say. And so with the media. No. Okay. So there were three main points. One was that uh, Kremlinist, uh, pro Kremlinist sources and, and pro Kremlin affiliates paid for ads on Facebook in support for <laughs> two uh, and their hackers hack the DNC on behalf of the Kremlin three a official approached Jared Kushner for a bribe and yeah all of that is absolutely minuscule it proves nothing um, it probably wasn't enough to decide the election in and of itself but did interfere yeah but you know that's a pretty low bar this is why I'm you know not buying gate um, it, it obviously wasn't enough to influence the election in you know any substantive way, but th that's what happened. R did interfere? And okay, again, why can't I run defense for and I won't do it? But why can't I run defense for? He has the uh, ability to classify what he wants, um, and we have a history of the FBI planning evidence, and uh, you know this is a complete and utter weaponization of the DOJ politically, like. Okay, so wh why are you so inconsistent on that? I'm into, of course, actively colluding with the deal. Because they had to come up with some explanation for why Hillary Clinton had lost to a real estate mogul. They couldn't believe that Hillary had lost, so they concocted this entire narrative. Yeah, because she was an absolute corporate neoliberal shill, and because the Democrats just weren't looking too good at the time. And which manipulated the American election, and this required them to work with the FBI to push forward a complete 
bullcrap oppo dossier, the steel dossier, and to use that dossier as the predicate for surveilling people like Carter Page. I, I don't think it was BS. It just only proved so much. Like, at best, I read Lou Harding's collusion, and the only thing it proved was, obviously, you have the three main points as the latter, but connections... W people's connections with who had connections to so at best you had all these like proxy uh moscow connections which is like uh, okay i can find a friend of a roommate of a cousin of a doctor of a lawyer whose mother might have once flown to moscow and you know blew a gru official like something like that but crazy extrapolations and the three points which in and of themselves proved nothing it was mostly a nothing burger but did uh, interfere in the 2016 yeah yes age were tangentially associated with the with the campaign and then launch a, a several years of Mueller investigation costing tens of millions of dollars into the connections between donald and, and the, yeah that was a waste pure proof that they had that the election had been affected they had no proof that Trump had coordinated with WikiLeaks or coordinated with, coordinated with Putin. So they, they had to come up with something. And the something they came up with was that on Facebook, the manipulated the American process. So maybe that wasn't the fault, but it was Facebook. Manipulated the American process. Uh, translation, paid for hundreds of thousands of ad ads promoting as president. So obviously they wanted their guy. But was it enough to influence anything? No, probably not. I think the votes of Americans are decided... Um, at the very least, six months before the elections take place. But, yeah. You're being dishonest here, Ben. Looks to my fault. And contradictory. So after 2016, and after it exploded their worlds. They came up with all these narratives. Trump was colluding with the with Facebook. Facebook didn't shut any of this down. So we need to shut down control of social media. Social media must be brought to heel. We must bring the methods of informational dissemination back under our own control. And so one of the huge narratives coming out of 2016 is that social media, which heretofore had been seen as an unmitigated good in politics. W wasn't it conservatives that were constantly complaining about big tech censorship and how uh, these social media conglomerates needed to be regulated because they just had too much of a market share? Oh yeah, so much for free markets and bootstraps. When it comes to feeding the poor, they'll constantly invoke bootstraps and markets and entrepreneurship. But when it comes to, you know, lying on Twitter. Oh, uh, monopolies, oligopolies, big tech censorship, big tech. You know, just put the word big in front of everything and it'll make conservatives cinder blocks. In 2012, Barack Obama was being widely feted for his use of social media in order to get people to the polls. His unprecedented use of analytical data garnered from social media like Facebook. This was considered an act of genius. When Cambridge Analytica did the same thing for 16, suddenly it was an act of criminality. And the told had used Facebook in order to uh, citation needed. American public opinion. And that was why Hillary Clinton had lost the election. It wasn't that she was the worst candidate in American history. I mean, it would take the worst candidate in American history to lose to Donald Trump at the time. The second most unpopular politician in America running against the first. Didn't you vote for him in 2020? I mean, you know, he, he had lost favor with the American people. So if he was the worst candidate in 2016, well, second worst uh, besides Hillary, according to you, so the second worst candidate um, during 2016, why did you vote for him in 2020? He had already, you know, lost his favorability among Americans. I mean, he lost the midterms, which is typical. But what's untypical is that he lost a re-election. So, 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 you know, you knew the writing on the wall, but why didn't you vote for him? First most unpopular politician in America. No, the solution, they said, is that the had somehow manipulated Facebook into changing the minds of the American people. Now, I pointed out at the time that the amount of interference they're talking about from the memory is really bad memory, much of it misspelled in bad American English, that... that, that that had had almost no impact, like, at all on the vote. I agree. If you looked at the amount of actual virality to the it did not exist. The entirety of viewership, uh, of viewership of the was less than the viewership of my personal Facebook page in a single month. That did not shift the election any more than I shifted the election in 2016. Significantly less, I would imagine, than I shifted the election in 2016. The, the however, this was the narrative, because the media always had the narrative. So they have the narrative of the appearance prompted by half of Trump with... Uh, yes. Uh, so... No, it, it was not just, you know, uh, uh, tons. It, it was not maybe 50 ads, you know. Obviously, they were spelled in, you know, really bad, you know, English. But it wasn't just a few ads, Benny Boy, okay? It was 3,500 ads, thousands of ads, okay? 3,500 
Facebook ads. I meant to stir up U.S. politics. I mean, that that that's you know significant, right? All right. What the f is going on with Plumber? Oh. Sh okay. All right. I'm gonna have to restart the stream probably. God damn, I, dude, I, I hate this Wi-Fi so f***ing much. All right. Excuse me. Let's get back to Spiro's video and finish up for the night. It was Russian interference prompted by... And then like Daily Wire or Daily Caller or Breitbart or Fox News. And then that turned into <laughs> collusion with Trump never stopped. That's why <laughs> stealing documents. That's why putting <laughs> those <laughs> in the closet. Well, now it turns Wait, out. No, who, who is saying, okay, b because <laughs> Russia supported Trump as a candidate broadly in 2016, that means he was coordinating with them by somehow keeping documents on them. Who is saying that? Like, okay, massive citation needed. I feel like this is just a straight up straw man. Pretty much all these politicians have in the closet. Alrighty guys, the rest of the show is continuing right now. You're not gonna wanna miss it, we'll be- Yeah, I don't wanna see the rest of the show. So, um, that's my stream for today, folks. Uh, God, I, I, uh, I'm starting to really, really hate politics. Okay, that's my stream for today. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you. Peace out.